play life. That is the music, life. You can't go wrong by playing life. You live that life, you play that life. And it's for real, it's honest. And you can't beat that. I am the man who was here before that didn't finish what he had to do. If I should pass, I will return to complete my work. Hello, I'm Dr. Lonnie Smith. It's a pleasure being here, uh, talking with you this evening, and I hope you get some understanding of what it's about. Thank you. I could say I was born into music. It was my life all from the beginning. My mother was a vocalist. Her sisters was a vocalist. Her mother, her mother was a vocalist. They had a, a quartet, you know, gospel quartet. So my cousins, they sung. So they would come over to the house sometime and we, we would just start singing. So music was always there always there. I didn't know that I was going to be playing music. It was just a thing I just played like most kids do, just enjoy playing and, you know, life itself. And you go to the churches and they would be playing and singing. And, and so I just felt music. I, they used to have catalogs. And those catalogs, every time I would t turn the page, I would always go to uh, the instruments. Why? No reason at all. I loved the instruments. Right from the beginning. If you watch a kid, they'll tell you what they're going to do uh, from the beginning. If you watch a kid, ain't nothing you can do about it. It's already there. It's embedded. You just watch them, and they'll tell you what they're going to do. And follow them, push them towards, help them to go towards that light. Art Cabrera, that was the beginning of it all. Went to the store, I used to sit in the store every day to closing time. And he, would, he asked me one day, he said, could I ask you a question, son? I said, yes, sir. He said, why do you come every day and you just sit to closing time? I looked at him in his eyes, I said, sir, if I had an instrument, I could learn how to play it. I could learn how to play it, I could work, and I could make a living. And I left. One day I went in, and he closed the store up. And he took me in the back where he lived, I in, the, in the house back in the back. I opened the door, and there was everything just, I started floating, lifted up. I found it, that was it. The love of my life. It was like, see the organ is a part of me, an extension of me. We found each other again. So I sit at the organ, didn't know how to play it. So, <clears throat> you know, I messed around with it. He said, if you can get this out of here, it's yours. You ever see ants picking up stuff, you know, larger than, my brothers and I picked that organ up. We put it in a pickup truck, took it on. I was in the snow, hovering over it like this, snow coming down, you know. Got it to the house. Didn't even know how to really turn it on. And you got all those knobs, and I was started pulling and pushing. It didn't sound like uh, what I had heard. <laughs> so. I had to get someone to show me. So I got Joe Madison, a friend of mine, to show me how it worked. And he was happy. He was just playing. And he was playing. Oh, he was a great player, and he just kept playing. But I couldn't touch the organ because he was having fun. So he left. I didn't know anything because he just got on and started playing. So I got someone else to show me how the stops and everything worked. He showed me. That was it. But I didn't take the organ out. I got a job, and they had a Willis or a Laurie or something. So I'm playing that and singing. Now, all of a sudden, a friend of mine came by, Jack McDuff. 
he played organ, great organist. He sat there and on a break he talk, was talking to me. He said, I heard you got an organ. We need an organ for next week. I wasn't going to lend my organ out. Brand new organ? No. I said, I don't know about that. He says, come on, he says, for a friend of mine and maybe one day I'll be able to help you. I don't want to do that. So he kept talking. I said, okay. I lent the organ out. It hurt too. Someone came by and he said, man, they up there playing your organ. They turn your organ up. Now I'm, I'm saying, oh, I'm scared because it's my organ. I don't want them to beat up my organ because it's beautiful. I go up there and guess who it was? Lou Donaldson and John Pat. Oh, boy. That's when I met Lou too. I didn't know Lou. And uh, I'm still today, I talked to him all the time a few days ago. He's, he still owe me, guess how much? That was $25 for the whole week. <laughs> I still haven't got that. I still haven't got that money. This is how all it began. So I go back and play, kept playing my job. Phone rang. On the other line was George Benson. Uh, George Benson was playing with Jack McDuff. He didn't know, he knew me only through, I sit in with them in Buffalo. And he asked me for my number. He said, let's get a group. He had my number, but he lost it when he left Jack McDuff. So Jimmy, he needed an organ player and he says, I know just the guy. And he mentioned me, he said, Lonnie Smith, he says, that's who I was looking for. So they called me in Ohio. He says, man, uh, let's get together. I say, I'm playing with him. He said, let them go, you know. So I give them a two week notice. I gave him a two week notice. He said, where are you gonna be? I said, I'll be playing in Buffalo. At that time, he says, I'll be there. George came down, he said, till the gig was over. He had his old beat up Cadillac and we pulled that organ, went to his hometown in Pittsburgh, put the organ in the basement of mom's house and everything. We <clears throat> learned two songs, Secret Love and Clockwise, on our first record, Clockwise. He said, man, Grant Green is playing tonight. Grant Green, Candy Finch, and Larry Young. They play on, <clears throat> on 125th and 7th. So you want to see it? I said, yeah, let's go. So we in, we in Pittsburgh, we took off. He said, we leave now, we can catch them. We took off. We went and they were playing. They called us up. We played a number. And I'm getting off the stage. Grant Green said, where are you going? Don't you go nowhere. So I said, oh, no, you know. So we played. He was in love. Now, every day when he saw me, he asked me to join his group to play with him. Now, he had Larry Young. It's something he heard and a feeling that he wanted at that time. That's what it was. So. The manager called him, begging, the, asking me constantly to play with him. He said, leave him alone. You, Larry, George, and Lonnie. <clears throat> so uh, we stayed together. Now, we end up playing at that club. Palms Cafe. People were hearing about us. Red companies wanted us. Another angel came in, John Hammond from Columbia Records, Newman's wife, and uh, he loved it. And they would come in all the time. She would always take a ring and put on my finger. She was one of the Vanderbilt. We got signed by Columbia Records. George got signed and I, I remember we were playing behind 
go, go girls. <laughs> Don't laugh. And Joy say, uh, we're going to play a song now. Told him to get down and we played because John Hammond was in the house, you know. And he signed us, he signed George and he signed me and the organ was broke. I'll never forget that. And we both got signed with Columbia Records. Now I was with Blue Note. And how I got with Blue Note, Lou Donaldson, when I did Alligator Boogaloo, George and I, Duke Pearson and Frank Wolf called me. Said, yeah, I think we want you over at Blue Note. Don't forget, all this was shock, shock therapy. <laughs> because I had just started playing. I was still, within a year, everything, all this stuff happened. How old were you? 21 or something like that. Happened in a year, you know. I say, wow. And the record did well. So, <clears throat> so what happened then was, uh, I made an album for, for uh, Columbia Records. And uh, now, after I, they wanted me over at Blue Note, they got me from Columbia and brought me over there. And they had everybody they needed over there. They all agreed because Blue Note was the top, still the top jazz label ever. I uh, recorded for them and I had fun, I enjoyed it. Now, George Benson and I were still playing. My record took off. Now George and I are playing and it was, it was strange. But what happened, they were asking for me to come and play concerts and different things. George and I played so like, I don't wanna leave my buddy, you know, cause George and I like this. So what happened, George was helping me. He was going on the road with me and cause you know, my stuff had took off before his. So um, I did that for a while. And then a uh, young fellow by the name of Melvin Sparks had came in. He had sit in with George and I. Uh, so he kept on me saying, man, if you ever need a guitar, I'm, I'm the man. I'm your man, I'm your guitar. So he went with Jack McDuff. He said, is it all right? Because when you get ready, just call me. Called him and he came and that was it. Musically speaking, how is soul jazz different from say other styles of jazz like bebop or hard mm -hmm. bop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bebop and hard bop is a little more tricky because you're soloing. When you're soloing, you're telling a story also but uh, you have changes and that you have to make it come together. You know, so like uh, you might be playing a, a riff or run. <clears throat> you might you wouldn't play that playing soul jazz. Why? Because the people didn't go to school for that. They don't understand that. That's a little too intricate, you know? So that's uh, trigonomic, you know? So like soul jazz is like something that feel good. You pat your feet so you can see and jazz, good jazz like that, you can pat your feet also. People used to come in the club and walk to that music without even knowing it. <clears throat> it was wonderful. You know, see them and they leave out the club with that beat. So you're saying like, booms, booms, boom. Do, do, Steve, do, do, Steve, boom. Do, fire, do, that's pull them notes. We, da, ba, do, ba, do, ba. See, you don't take it and you, you don't do the little and the bottle do by the little and boom. It, see, you have a heartbeat and you fall in with that heartbeat of the pounding of the rhythm of the beat. If you can do that, you're safe. 
playing any kind of music because there's a beat. If you get off that beat, you know, you have drums and all the bass. They have to really lock in. So that's why the music feels great in all genres of music because the drums is the first, then the bass and everything else comes in. They're more important because you got a heartbeat. If you're playing nine over here, seven over here, three here, 12 here, and you, you just, everything is mixed up, you sound great. You, I know you can play, right? But now we have to play together. Now, if your heart beats like that, what happens? You flatline. Too much going on. You flatline. You have to go in with that, just like jumping rope. If you don't jump in the right time, hit that pocket and let it roll a train. If it's not going together, those, those wheels, it's going to go off. Sure, it's going to go off for sure. A car, anything. So, how did that more kind of groove oriented? style of jazz, mm -hmm. known as soul jazz. How, how did that come about? Well, what I think, if you listen to basically the old records, when I listen to them, believe it or not, they swung. I mean, the old song. Who are you talking about? I'm talking about people like uh, Ruth Brown and all of them, you know, back then you say, every time it rains, you know, songs like that. Yeah, I feel even what's that? What's the little fellow's name? Uh, uh, his name was uh, Frankie Lyman. I'll always love you. See a swing? Uh, it's true, swing. Uh, 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 swung. So then they was kept playing even uh, one for the money, two for the show. See, go cat. See what I'm saying? Still swung. See, so you you have that. That rock feeling, the swing, the swing, the gospel feeling, everything is embedded in there. Because in the, in the church, they get that beat too. See, that? that's where it all comes from, that beat. Get in with that beat, that's it. You know, but that, and then you change rhythms and beats, but keep that beat in there to feel. And then it started coming up with all those different cycles of beats like uh, James Brown, and all of them, you know, it was, it was great. Was it, was it for you about, and some of your, your contemporaries, was it about making jazz that, that could appeal to, a, to the people more? Well, and my thing was, I had been through it. So I took that what, where I came from into basically, uh, you know, the style uh, th that I play now, because I come come out of that field with George and uh, Lou and all of them. So, and I, I always had that lazy type feel. You know, groove like that, slow and easy. And Frank Wolf, I wanted to change. Frank Wolf, he says, I say, I want to do something else, he said. Maybe next next record, I said, do another one like that. I said, I didn't want to, because I wanted to. I wanted to do that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> so it didn't happen. And the people start knowing you for that, and you keep playing it, and then it, it became a big thing of that that uh, funky groove, laid back, so so feeling, you know. How important was your instrument, the organ, in launching that that particular style, that that sound, the, the soul jazz groove? Jazz yeah, sound? I think it was one of. The, I think it was. Can as you force, save the organ? Yeah, the organ, the Hammond organ, because they had been using organs in a lot of uh, uh, music back then. They had uh, Baby Dave Cortez, they had uh, um, Booker T, 
but it was still a little different. When I played it, it was like, sort of like a, in a jazz feel where you could think of it like that too, you know. So it was a little different because even, even Jimmy uh, tried to play a little of that. He played it some too also. But what happened, the feeling was a little different. And that's what they heard. So it, it was great. I think it helped the feel of that during that time. So it was, everybody started playing that like that. It you worked. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith, he was playing uh, uh, some of the, the funk too. And, but uh, when I came in, because I remember he played, we played both, he played the song I loved. It was Who's Afraid of Virginia Wolf? But on the end, I tagged it with a funk groove, a little, it was a whole different thing. <laughs> you know, because that's what I heard. You know, it wasn't on on his record, but I heard that. When you say you heard it, what, what do you mean? What were you? In hearing? my mind, that's what I heard. Because I'm a type of player who plays like in the moment, in the moment. Because you can be sitting here and we can be playing, and then you say, "What's going on? What are you doing?" Because you know the song, we'll play the song, but you say. He's not doing what he's supposed to do. Say, for instance, we were, we were in the studio. Uh, David Fat Ed Newman, Lee Morgan, and uh, I think it was Marion Buck on drum and Melvin Sparks. And we were playing one of the songs. And when you go down, you count down, and he, Rudy Van Gelder would turn us on we start playing every single time we would play that i would change it they say what do you want us to play i say but well, don't play that i'm gonna play play this this time we play that they play that they had to cut because i would change it every time i can't i can't see <clears throat> by playing by ear and my head keeps telling me, do this, <laughs> do that, do this. Instead of playing what's there. That can be very rough on musicians that don't play like that because you've got to have still a business and you have to have something to tell you where you're going. Where are you going? Oh, just follow me. <laughs> That's me. Oh, turn here. Let's go here. No, you, you can get lost at turn, turn here. We'll be all right. That's me. At the end of the moment. So it's interesting because, you know, that, that soul jazz, that groove oriented style. Yeah, as you said, it was kind of about staying in the pocket, <laughs> but improvisation was a big part of that. Mm -hmm. You would improvise around that, around that. Uh, you you uh, have to improvise around that. And take, for instance, when you're playing, you say, well, he went there, or he's doing that. What am I gonna play? Enjoy, enjoy the moment. You know, what you're gonna do, write it out? You know, like a, a, a string player or something, you have to write out a lot of solos, you know. So uh, you just got to wing it, wing it, and hang in there. It'll be all right, it'll be all right. It will be guaranteed, it will be all right. Won't be like you think it was gonna be, it'll be better, you know. But you think it's better because you uh, <clears throat> know that this chord goes here, this chord goes there, that chord. So what do you wanna do? Do you wanna say, da ba 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 You wanna play like that? I said, if you hit that one more time, I'm pulling you off the stage. See, da 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 da. Uh 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 uh. You don't have to do that. You don't have to follow every chord. 
Dava 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 dava. Little da dava humbi ba. We dava. Follow it that way, you know. You know. So that's what happens. So you got to listen and follow it, and it'll take it'll take you there. So, <clears throat> what was the impact of uh, of this new style at the time, like in the mid late '60s? You know, what was the impact of this style on the jazz scene, the, the, the whole soul jazz? Yes, scene? everybody was playing jazz. Straight ahead, straight ahead. The audience, see, because they, they always dance to jazz, period. Even if I play something fast, people used to dance to the music. But, but with that beat, even the person that couldn't dance would get up and try to do something. You know, so the impact was people were into music. You should, you should have seen the people would come out. I'd be playing at the clubs and they were so happy. It was all about jazz, you know. So you would stick a few of those tunes in there, and they would sing. They would know the tunes of jazz and the other too. So it was beautiful. Then some of the, the jazz musicians sometimes, you know, like they would get like wonder why you you playing that kind of music, but they couldn't really knock it because it sounded good. But they would say, and someone would say, this is the bad thing. Well, you play, I might ask you, you play, I don't play that kind of music, man. I, I don't want to play straight ahead. See, every genre of music, rock, funk, or uh, classical, all, all this great music, every one of them. In other words, that person that play heavy metal or it's just a great, as I am or anyone else. Their music is potent. They have something to say too. That's great. So if, if, if they knock it, they won't learn anything either. They'll stay right here. So like, all the music has been played before. You're not really playing nothing new. You only got 12 notes there. What you do with them, it's your business. And how you make it come together. You can come up with some beautiful things. How many times, what can we do here? What can we do here? And that's the beauty in the puzzle. Make it work. Make it work. What were some of the criticisms you heard back then? That was, the, that was one of the biggest ones. That was the biggest one. Uh, why, do you, why do you play uh, that music? I don't, you know, they thought that you were are leaving the other, you see, I'm going to, I'm going out for the money. I'm going out, I'm just leaving jazz. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I love the song. I play the song because it is, it's what I make it. That song becomes mine now. But that criticism was, why well, I don't want to play that music? I don't want to, because it's hard to do. Because everybody can't change. You might be a great jazz player, might be a great funk player, might be a great gospel player. But when you play, it tells where you're at, who you are, because it's going to stand out. If you speak a different language, see like, take for instance, if I played, uh, uh, Latin music, you can play it, but I can't do it like the original guys. I just, just it's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's just not going to, I know where everything goes, but it's not going to happen. I can play it, but the feeling won't be there. It'll sound good, but you didn't mean that. So do you think it was, it was like a jealousy? To some extent. It's like, you remember when they used to have Diana Ross and the Supreme? You had uh, Michael Jackson and the Jackson. And it, no, it was Jackson, Jackson Fire, right? And they pulled them out. It's like, why? You took the head off. Come on. Why did you do that? You wanted, it's like you left, just left us just like that, left me hanging. So you go out there because we're all a family anyway. 
musicians are family, but when you're playing, when you're playing and you go to that other field, they, they can't deny it now because it does help pay the bills also. But I never played a song to like make a hit because I love the song. I don't care what it, if it's a polka, if I love that song, I'm gonna play it. <laughs> it's just simple as that. But that was the biggest criticism. Oh, he done went to the other side, oh, hell, he got rich now, you know. It wouldn't make any difference. Wouldn't make not a bit of difference. I think there were certain, I guess, jazz musicians and jazz fans who, I guess, didn't want they, to see the change. They didn't want, definitely didn't want to see the change because take for instance, if you buy, uh, you, I remember, this is a good analogy there. You remember Miles? When Miles was playing uh, Kind of Blue and all that stuff. Okay, well, it was uh, George Butler, it was who uh, Jimmy Smith and I were, we went to see him and he was making a comeback. He had taken off. We sitting there <clears throat> and he's playing. We thought it was good to, for him to come back, right? In our mind, we thought he's gonna play what he had been playing. No. He started playing the other stuff, electric and stuff, you know. I said, hmm, you know, everybody said, Jimmy said, come on, man, you're gonna play it with, come on, man. oh man, come on, you know, because you want to hear, when you buy an album, you want to hear that. When you go to play a concert, they want to hear that. Good example. I'm in Detroit. We're playing Lee Morgan, Fathead, Nate, David Newman. I say, stay back. I'm going to play just a trio first. Melvin Sparks and Marion Booker. I start playing original compositions that wasn't on the record and straight ahead jazz. I'll never forget this. I kept playing, I would never hold my head up. I always held my head down. And what had happened, I told them I played one or two songs, then they come out of the curtains playing. They came out of the curtains. People did like this. Place is packed. This is what they wanted to hear. Can you imagine that? Place is packed. Play the next song. What did they want to hear? Ba 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 da 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 da. And think you better think and stuff like that. And record it. See what I'm saying? Now I'm hurt because. They know who I am, why? But they didn't know because they heard what they heard on radio and that's what they wanted to hear. Now I had to make this up. They gave a press party, I walked out of the press party. I wouldn't, you know, I didn't want to talk to nobody. I was sitting on the side. If I have a comeback, I'll make it up. I came back with Move Your Hand, the joke. I did seven steps to heaven. Ba, 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 da, da. I thought we got a hit. He said, we got a hit. I thought that was it. He said, no, move your hand. I said, now I get up and play it. And I stand up from the organ. I held my head up and I started singing. Audience started singing it with me, the place. I said, is that all it is to it? That was it. Progress kind of gets into the later 60s, 70s. The term jazz funk mm -hmm. comes around. What 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 is jazz funk, and how the, is it different from soul jazz? The, the beat jazz funk is is just a, a turn of the beat. When you turn the beat, just like I would say, jazz funk, you got hip hop. They're all similar, but it's just a beat, a feeling of the beat that's turned around to satisfy. Uh, that uh, the people of that time. So, uh, but but with jazz funk, you were getting both. 
uh, at that time you you were getting both you were getting the jazz and and the funk you know so the soul you were getting it all right there in one and it was fun playing it but the beat it it, it makes them feel that they are still there with you you're not leaving them you know how would you say jazz funk is different from soul jazz jazz funk well just like take for instance uh, you ever hear this song? Um, I recorded. Ba ba da ba da ba do ba do do ba do ba da. A da ba da do ba do do ba da. Freedom Jazz Dance. You hear the funk in there. I say. See. Now, just like you say, rock and roll and all the rest of them, it's the beat. Take for instance, you saying, ooh, ah, mm, mm, that beat, mm, 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 mm. right? So, if you want to play it in time with with the funk, how would you play it? Ooh, ah, mm, ah, ooh, 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 ah, yeah. See what I'm saying? I don't do why it's just like you would take it and change the feeling of the beat. It's like uh, a drummer is playing. He can't play jazz. He think he's playing jazz, but he he's not really playing jazz because playing jazz jazz is like a '66 feel in a way. In other words, '66, '66, '66. A funk player would play it. A rock player would play. 55, 55, 55, 55. See, you have back beat and you have all kinds of beat, bossa novas and things. That's what it's called, bossa novas. You have different, you know, Latin feel, ding with the bill and stuff. It's beautiful, you know. So it's just a beat that makes, it that turns the, 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 the sound of what, what the people call, would call it, they have to call it something. But they call it, you know, cause jazz, Jazz could really be anything. James Brown always talks about uh, on the one. Uh, that's the beat. That's one. Well, on the one, when James Brown's talking about on the one, uh, see, some people play and they don't know where one is. So that's what happens when you play outside of avant garde. Some people don't know where the one is. Where is the one? See? So you don't feel it. Where is the one? Like Lou, Lou Down said, can't say it. Well, it's there. It's there. It's, in a space where you better find that one, you know, you find that one, you know, you got to feel that one because that's what, if you plan, because if you plan and you stop, bap, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, boom. See what I'm saying? You got to know where that, where that one, where you come back in. See, then they start playing, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bop, right? Now watch it, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bop. They would be after the beat or something like that. Do you see what I'm saying? Dang. So it's not really one. So if you're playing a lick, we want that lick together. No. You say, bah. He's still playing because you, you're playing over the beat. Uh, the, that one is here. So, so James Brown, if you notice, all of his songs were like, they hit. He could dance. When you twist, he would dance and twist to that that beat, and then he would spin, and he'd, ha, ah, cause it hit. He would find you if you didn't hit that, that on one, you know, cause he, cause he, he'd, ha, he'd do his dance, ha, you know, and it's like, <laughs> so, so, you know, you have to have that one. Musicians who are doing jazz funk alongside the soul mm -hmm. jazz stuff, did it receive the similar types of, yeah. of criticism? Yeah. Could you talk a little uh, bit? Uh, uh, the, the people were doing the jazz funk and the soul funk. It got a little bit better as the time went on because what happened, they were begin beginning to get used to it, you see. So uh, when you're playing uh, one and you're just changing that beat around, but you're still playing the same songs or something similar, so it's still great. So they didn't, they didn't bother you about it. They don't bother you about it anymore. You know, it's just part of the, 
part of the business now. Why do you think um, those those particular styles, soul, jazz, jazz, funk, kind of started to fade out in terms mm. of popular music? Uh, mm. You know, by the definitely by the late seventies, mid seventies. Yes, it 70s. did. Why do you think that happened? It has to change. It has to change. All the music has to change because that's the way it go from time to time. You know, swing, bop, all that. And just everything has a change. Blues, you know, everything just have a time. It has its period. Where did know. jazz go? <laughs> well, straight ahead jazz. It seemed like it went backwards. It, it, it did. It did go backwards. Actually, it hurts. It hurts because when you go to Europe and different places like that. You know, they understand, they understand what you, you're doing because they, they're way ahead uh, in that, that for saying, uh, saying that they understood the music uh, and it's still like, it's fresh for them. But when you play in, when I go and I play Alligator Boogaloo or something like that, that's much better much better they enjoy that from that time that hip-hop uh, 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 funk soul jazz yes. we never knew it would hit that hard never knew didn't even think about it didn't even cross our mind we just played <laughs> didn't have no idea and today i can still play that and it's just as fresh you know and I think there's a reason for that, and that's going to lead me to my next question. Um, what did you think of hip hop music when you first heard it? I thought it was nice, but it it wasn't. Uh, I thought it was really nice, basically because uh, I love to see people play, and they mixing it all together. You just cramming that stuff in and making it work. And that's the great thing about it. They were throwing more of our stuff in there. You know, I think, you know, they really did. They threw a lot of, see where we were playing that stuff, you know, in the sixties and stuff, things like that. The hip hop started putting it, some of the stuff in their music, those songs, you know, so it was good. Do you remember when you first learned a song of yours had been sampled in a hip hop record? When I learned, it was late. <laughs> Cause I didn't pay any attention to it. Never, never paid. Someone had to tell me that. I said, get out of here. You know, when they say, uh, they sample your music. I say, oh really? You know, cause I hadn't thought about it. It's uh, I hadn't even heard it. I hadn't heard it. Do you remember a specific song? Like, well, that sampled or a specific well I, I just did a thing on a, the Jimmy Fallon show, right? Mm -hmm. And they were playing my song. I was doing a, a Spinning Wheel. And um, I had heard that it had been sampled. So I seen a program they was talking about, and they picked up one of my uh, albums. He said, man, when this came out, it was one of my albums, Drive, with Spinning Wheel on. And um, I, had no, I, I had no idea, none. I think the first group to do it was Tribe Called Quest. That's it? Yeah. Yeah, Tribe Called Quest, I had never even thought about it. I had never even, to someone told me that uh, Tribe Called Quest had done it. And I, I had heard it, I had never heard it. I actually, I hadn't heard it until the last year or something like that. Out of all that time, I had never heard it. Cause I just, I'm still the same person that I was. I just play music. I knew Tribe Called Quest, but I had, didn't think they had done that cause I just hadn't thought about it. When you fully understood, you know, what they had done, how did it make you feel? Make you feel great because just like I said, when, when your music touch someone else in this time, that's something special. 
that's a connection. There's a connection with the young fellas and, and us, you know, it's like, that's a great feeling because uh, it's a, a, a bond, a family that's bonded. It's love there. It's beautiful. Do you believe that the style of jazz music that you and your contemporaries created, that soul funk, jazz funk sound, um, that it helped influence hip hop sound? I think it did. I think how much I don't know, but I think it did. I do. I don't know how it really came about, but I think that hip hop and the, the soul funk had came from that era. So it, it's just like our stuff came from uh, playing the uh, soul, jazz, and funk came from the straight edge jazz. Our stuff came from there. So it, it just keeps going on and keeps evolving into something else. It's a beautiful thing. So you can make a hit, you can be out there, and then you've forgotten. But I'm still here. Lou Donaldson's still out here. Hmm. Why? Because the young people have sampled the music. You never thought that would happen. So now, you play and you got people of age up there and up there, and they're coming to hear your music. Now, that's the beauty in it because you send all these people together. You understand what I'm saying? You bring all these people together, and you can't beat that. <laughs>